Hey guys, welcome back to G2 Esports Invitational Class Legends. Uh, we just saw the mirror match between fascinating druid players, life coach and the Elki. And um, now we'll be uh, having a duel between AK Wonder from SK Gaming, a new player on the scene, who is Mark Kennedy. And uh, this is also a poker, pro poker player. So um we'll see a new face right now that he'll this will be his first broadcasted tournament i'm really curious what he will bring to the table this is the first time we'll see him play uh as i said on the broadcast tournament so he uh, he is a big unknown um uh, but for the guys that just tuned in uh, let me just explain the rules Qu quickly uh, let's go through the rules and how the players are building the decks for this format because it's sure. it's quite unusual right so right so what do you think? Yeah, definitely a, a different twist on things. Obviously, uh, you, can, you can elaborate, but this is basically a single class format where each player has to pick one individual class and build their decks from that. But you go ahead and elaborate on the rules, Lothar. Yeah, so each player picks one class. Let's say someone picks Mage. Then he builds two decks, 30 cards each, of course. And you have completely uh, complete freedom when it comes to building those decks so you can even build the same two decks but it doesn't really make any sense to do that but the goal is to either bring two different archetypes of the decks or to tweak one archetype to have good matchups against certain um certain other classes so when you play a best of five the decks are not being eliminated you stick to the uh, deck if you win or you can change or stick to the class if you lose this way you have a second chance when you lose in a favorable matchup or you switch to a deck that should have a better matchup against your opponent so yeah that's about yeah, it very much so and we've seen players reacting to that in different ways we've seen um players like zetalot for example taking one deck that he's extremely comfortable with in control priest and just taking it out in a couple of different ways to face down against different matchups you know priest for example has always been bemoaned it's like you know sure this is a really good deck if you're just aiming at one thing but how do you play priest on ladder so that you beat aggro and control well you know now in this format you don't have to you can just build the same deck two different ways mm -hmm. one built against aggro one built against control so that sort of thing is definitely viable but then we've also seen the players um for example, Ecop, who brought Warlock, he just brought Zoo and then a heavily um, control-based uh, Reno Lock. But going into this matchup now, uh, Mr. Mark Kennedy has decided to be the villain, and he is the man bringing Paladin to this tournament, Lothar. We said we hadn't seen one. Yeah. We said we were surprised, thought it would be a very, very uh, extremely viable choice in this format. It looks like uh, Mark Kennedy is the man to, to bust us out with the Paladin here. That's true, and... Um, hmm. Well, this means that he's most likely bringing one version of Paladin that is Secret Paladin, although we don't see any secrets yet, and the other version might be anything can happen, because that will be the go-to strategy when it comes to Paladins, right? For sure, yep. Hmm. Definitely. Anything, anything is an incredibly powerful deck in certain matchups. You know, I'm talking about you know, Reno Locks, uh, Control Priests, um, even Control Warriors can very, very rarely out-armor out the burst that you can do with, with anything if you're able to get both off. Um, the, the caveat to that is, you know, I don't know exactly how much experience Mark Kennedy has with Hearthstone. I saw uh, a little bit of his activity in the Skype chat and you know, he was saying things like, oh, I'll be the guy that you all want to get first round and I'll be the fish in this tournament, <laughs> etc. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how confident he is with Hearthstone and anything is not an easy deck to play by any means of the imagination. So That's true. It might be that he doesn't feel comfortable enough to bring that deck. Um, if so, you know, we might be seeing something like Secret Paladin and then like a, a mid-range Control Paladin type thing as, as the other option. Um, so yeah, I'd be really, really interested to see what his other deck is. But it looks very much like from the Haunted Creeper that this is the Secret Paladin that we're looking at right now. And uh, up against a Zoo deck, which is featuring uh, an Acidic Swampoos from AKA Wonder. It seems like the, um, this is a go-to tech choice in the, in the current format that most of the players are playing an um, Acidic Swampoos in almost every iteration of Warlock that we have seen mm. today. Uh, it's very interesting because it's an assumption uh, that most of the players will be bringing a class with weapons, right? So that yep. is Shaman. Uh, I mean, okay, never mind, scratch that. That is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that class uh, doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it might not exist in this format, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is uh, mainly Warrior and Paladin, right? Those are the targets and maybe Rogue. Because Super JJ probably will bring Rogue to the table, yeah. right? Yeah. But in general, 
it seems like the, the acidic swamp pools it fits strategy of um zoo because it's still a, a decent minion for two mana right and yeah. um it's it fits into reno warlock because you would like to have um an answer to some form of board control from your opponent and board control in this case would be the weapon which uses your health your own health as a resource yeah, absolutely. And I think this there's a particular build of Zoo that may have come, come from the, the Asia server originally, which carries a, a Cynic Swampoos and a Big Game Hunter. And it's specifically built to deal with Secret Paladin, which is insanely popular. Like, if you think Secret Paladin is, in, is popular on, like, the EU server or the NA server, wherever you play, like, go to Asia. Like, that, it's like Zoo and Secret Paladin everywhere. It's like the entire meta. <laughs> Um, so you know the idea of having the acidic swamp who's to deal with a muster weapon or a cog hammer or whatever it is even the Ashbringer, and then having that big game hunter for the potential snipe on the the turn six challenger uh, oh. those two very very powerful tech options but did you see that that punish mm. that will just go into that trucible champion the acidic swampers will just punish heavily that trucible champion play this turn and it looks like he is gonna... So the option here is Knife Juggler Acidic Swampoos, which can help him deal with these 1-1s one -one straight away, but does expose him a little bit more to Consecration, depending on what the, what happens with the knives. Um, so yeah, he's gonna have to trade probably... Yeah, the 2-3 trades perfectly into that. Yeah. You saw one Masterful Battle, right. and the unpunishable thing is Consecration, yeah. so... He actually plays around the Consecration. Yeah, this exactly. Way. That's what I was about to say. Wow! On so Meccano. That is a card right there. That is unfortunately a bad deck choice against Zoo in particular. Yeah. Because this is the deck that battles you for board control the most. I don't think there's a, another deck that will do as much in board control, um, in board, about board control as Zoo. Yeah, agreed. Um, definitely the chance to, to blow out the game. Um, you know, similar to... It's another card, much like Blessing of Kings, Coghammer, etc., which rewards you for having consolidated a board. And the theory of this deck is that you will have consolidated a board because you just play all the most efficient minions in the game that are, for some reason, exclusively available to Paladins. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, Enhanced Emikana actually makes some sense. You know, it's along that same line of thinking. Of, I'm going to have minions on the board, therefore my Blessing of Kings is good. I'm going to have minions on board, therefore my Colcam is good. Same thing holds true with Enhanced Emikana. So, definitely not a ridiculous minion to include in your deck, but in this situation where you're facing down this huge board from Zoo with nothing in play yourself, uh, it does look a little bit silly being top decked in that situation. Yep. True. But now it looks really bad for, for Mark Kane because the the... The problem is you can't really ha uh, you don't really have a way to clear those minions without a consecration, and he didn't have that last turn. So even though you top deck a pure value card, which is Mysterious Challenger, you have no way of stopping the onslaught that is staring at you. Yeah, no way. It's just not good enough. Um, Noble Sack only prevents one of these attacks, and then the rest are just going to come plowing through to your face. You'll be obligated to take out the two-one taunt, so that is more than enough damage. Um, AKA Wonder has him covered here. Let's put it in poker terms. So this is just going to be game one going to AKA Wonder. Yep, seems like so. I mean, uh, unless no. <laughs> To be honest, I wouldn't actually play the uh the Mr. Challenger. I was just thinking that. I was because just thinking Because you that. are revealing which secrets are you playing in the game, in the deck. Also, you're just straight up revealing the fact that this is secret paladin and not mid-range paladin. Because like mm -hmm. you have you mm -hmm. haven't played a secret keeper, you haven't played a secret, you haven't played Mysterious Challenger, you haven't played Blessing of Kings, like none of these cards I mean, you've just curved out with minions. All of these minions could have potentially been in mid-range paladins. So. Yeah, exactly. Especially in this format where you'll have to bring two different decks. You know, for all AKA Wonder knows, this could have been mid-range paladin. True that. True that. And uh, the first game goes to AKA Wonder of SK Gaming. And uh, now the choice will be for Mark to either switch the deck or still play the Secret Paladin. Now, it all depends what did he prepare for the format. If the second um second um second deck will have some techs that will be great against Zeus. So let's say maybe mind control tech more board control so an example uh let's say pyromancers yeah and um what else 
What else can be put into into Paladin that will help against Zoo? Uh, I mean, Defender of Argus, anti killbot, like. And Defender of Argus is really hard to pull off against the Zoo. This is, at least that's my impression. Um, yeah, it's true. But I mean, you you can go one for one with them, or better than one for one with them in efficiency in the early game because you know just about any Paladin deck that you run will be getting um, mini bot and muster for battle. The problem is after those turns where you kind of run out of efficient things to do, where um, you know Zoo just keeps going over and over again with efficient trading tools, but. Uh, looks like okay. This this may or may not be a different deck. Like he may have two different builds of Secret Paladin. Yeah, that is actually um a good. Actually, that's actually a good idea. Because we have the Zombie Chow in this deck. This is a, a a variation of the deck that again I think popped up first on the on the Asia server or from an Asian player who I think hit uh, Cross. I believe it was that hit rank one legend on NA. I believe with a deck that had like four secrets, two Zombie Chows, outdoor peacekeepers, like a really heavily like tech anti aggro version of the deck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so this could be that sort of thing and again like definitely has some validity in the mirror to have these extra security minions like zombie chow in your deck although we do see a divine favor which is yes. not going to be a great card against Zoo. exactly what I wanted to say unless your opponent will stack cards like Dark Peddler which are replacing themselves right? sure because yeah. next, let's say next turn for Mark will be minibot coin redemption Right, and then your opponent is kind of like left in the blind about what is that secret? Because if it's Avenge, you don't want to go to give the mini bot the buff with the shield still on. Yep. So you probably not kill the zombie chow, and you would rather ping the divine shield instead. And then you will have a really good divine favor in turn three. Yeah, I mean. I can't can't argue with that logic. Uh, we're just getting confirmation here from the admins that this is in fact the same deck from Mark Kennedy. So we just didn't see things like uh, Divine Favor and Zombie Chow being drawn in the previous game. And AK Wonder has access to his own Zombie Chow here, but that Mortal Coil is quite appealing as well. Looking Ooh. at the Chow that's on the board, this is a tough choice. Yeah, this is a tough choice because it's either Zombie Chow or Mortal Coil. And uh, I think like Mortal Coil might be better because you have immediate answer to whatever will be happening next turn. Because you can curve out, and the instant speed uh, will be more important than a bigger body on board. Okay. Um, okay, I think like maybe in the long term, Zombie Chow contests the expected state of the board a little bit better. If you're expecting Minibot to come down on turn two from the Paladin, maybe having the Chow was a, a little bit superior. Um, but yeah, um, can't argue with the Mortal Coil. It does immediately solve the problem that's put in front of him, but. The rest of his turn here is Knife Juggler, which is not looking great straight into a shielded minibot. Interesting enough, he attacked into Abuse of Surgeon instead of the Dark Peddler. I'm just thinking, is there any reason? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I fail to think of one. Probably will not make a difference anyway here, but... Um... Yeah, it's, it's unlikely to, because we probably do have to trade this shield off and just play the Knife Juggler. This doesn't feel great at all, but yep. yeah, a little bit of a weird sequence of plays there from, from Mark Kennedy. Also, as you you know spoke about at length, he chose not to coin out the secret there, which seemed like a really powerful play, just to get cards out of his hand to create kind of the, the secret vortex for your opponent where they don't know what the right play is against all the secret options. And yeah, just to empty cards from your hand to, to activate the Divine Favor. So. He would have um, just an Arcan Intellect this turn, right? Yeah. This turn he would need to basically play the Redemption and Hero Power because he needs to keep that coin now for the Mysterious Challenger. So the Divine Favor just sits there. <coughs> I like uh, not trading here. Uh, I, I don't, because you just... Uh, but you, you make the play that makes question your opponent what kind of secret it is. Right, but like either way, the first thing your opponent is going to do is play minions, and then there's a good chance that 1-1 one, one gets sniped down, and the bluff just doesn't really work at all, because the redemption That's just goes off. So. We'll see. Know. Oh! There yeah. we go. That's quite unfortunate, but the... Yeah, that's actually quite unfortunate, because now we have to play Divine... Uh, sorry, um... Truce of a Champion, kill the 1-3, and trade with the 3-1 with your 2-2 two -two anyway. Yep, uh, seems pretty unfortunate. He does now have the True Silver set to go against this uh, Imp Gang boss on the following turn, but the abusive no, Defender of yeah, Argus exactly. play, <laughs> it's gonna shut that down pretty hard. And that is a pretty much 
perfect scenario for this turn, for turn 5, before you want to play Doomguard. Because you burst a lot of damage, that's 8 damage to the face. Your opponent will have to get 3 damage in return. Well, that keep. No, you have to play Mysterious Challenger. So. I was gonna say, I think I would have just Argus'd the, uh, the Imgang boss on that turn. I don't really see the purpose in Argusing the 3 2 to just give a target for that True Silver on this turn. I think I would have just hidden the 2 1 behind that 3 5 wall of the Imgang boss. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, Challenger does come down here. We see that one Noble Sacrifice is in hand, and uh, so a Redemption has been played. So that is probably just the Noble Sack, Avenge, and the it's either Competitive Spirit or Redemption, whatever the last secret is that he plays. Uh, sorry, or uh, Repentance, whatever the mm -hmm. last secret mm -hmm. is that he plays. Now, AK Wonder has another perfect scenario. Two drop into Ar uh, second Defender of Argus, and you just ignore the huge minion on board, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So he's probably fairly confident that a redemption is not going off here. So uh, potentially proccing the repentance on the haunted creeper here is pretty good value. And then using the Argus, as you say, to to taunt up even further and just start pushing a, bu a bunch of damage to face. Would you favor to use the um, the M Gang boss to attack the noble sacrifice because it generate more minions this turn, and the M Gang boss will die to the attack anyway? Yeah, it's possible. Um, oh, again, that's yeah. This is very interesting. Um, Argus usage here from from AKA Wonder. He seems to be presenting sort of better trades to his opponent than he necessarily has to in this situation. So this set up a way of killing the nine, the, the ten nine with your Doomguard, but that's yeah, I don't, not I don't how think you want to deal with anything, with no. with the Paladin. You just want to kill him before he kills you. Right. Um, that's the beatdown matchup. In this situation it's not about board control yeah interesting stuff so the last secret was competitive spirit and not repentance which uh, makes this mysterious challenger a 10-9 not particularly relevant because it has a bunch of work to do pounding through this this board of small annoying minions first and a, a pitiful one secret comes out of the second challenger that will be avenge i believe based on the likely makeup of his deck and the fact the second noble sack is in hand oh that's that, a, that's a good hand, seven drop is a doctor boom killing that are we um, i mean I, yeah i guess we do because it just trades for the doctor boom right well he was checking for the second noble sacrifice right uh, but uh um in general i would not like to trade that because if he would play it doesn't that almost didn't change anything i mean if you play if you play aggressively yeah and if you use the defender of argus in a different way to get more minions with taunt then you just ignore the huge minions that can't go through that. And you just deal insane amount of damage in two turns. And that's about it. That's how the match ends. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. That Aldor Peacekeeper is a fantastic draw though, especially alongside the four drops that he had in hand. He was he was flowing a little bit of mana before this, but now the, the Aldor plus the Shredder is a pretty perfect curve for Mark Kennedy. And uh, I guess he's just gonna push his way through this horny creeper it doesn't actually take any damage off the board but you know he needs to fight start bashing his way through these taunts at some point because uh his solution at this point is probably just going to be uh being aggressive and pushing damage to face at some point well, now it's only four damage to the face and i guess you need to play the swampoos anyway yeah i mean it's either play it or discard it right so i don't see any reason why you wouldn't play it Ooh, Boombo to Ooh. face. Only for one, though. It doesn't really progress him any further. You know what's what's interesting now? That mm -hmm. in this situation, AK Wonder can lose this game when he should have won already two turns ago. At least that, that's my impression. Like, if it would have been super aggressive, because now he's he started the trend of trading. Right. Oh, and that mini bot. Yeah, but again, I mean, that minibot is, is unfortunate for him, but he's put himself in a position where these things can happen to him. Just, like, small decisions. Oh, my God. Trade of the Doomguard. How, how will he win now? I'm not sure. I mean, he does have access to two cards per turn, but the Paladin but... just still has a bunch of resources in hand to play with, so... You have access to two cards per turn, but you use a Doomguard... You yep. use a Dr. Boom and you use a low tip. Yeah. Uh, wait, did it? No, he didn't. No, uh, no, but, no, no. Uh, but that's like really a huge problem. 
It is, for sure, yeah. But yeah, just a number of uh, sequences throughout this game from, from AKA Wonder, just his, his use of Defender of Argus presenting, you know, better targets to his opponent than it seemed like he needed to. Um, and then switching to the defensive play later on, and now he's just whiffing on draws. That's just not enough board presence this turn to be able to, to generate any sort of pressure. Flame Imp is going to come down, get traded out easily by uh, a minion of choosing. And yeah, Nerubian Egg is going to require an activator or it's going to sit there being useless. Both Defender of Argus's are gone, exactly. so he can't turn that into a wall. And he's going to continue the path of trading here and just try and outvalue Mark Kennedy over the long game. Wow, this is a unexpected way of ending a game, I would say. It is. Now it's the turn when you just play Knife Juggler into low tip and hero power first before you trade because you don't want to activate the egg. Right. So the knives aren't going to have any impact on yes. the trades you make unless both knives hit the flame imp. So you might as well just you know go for that YOLO chance that you hit the flame imp anyway and just reduce the chances of the Ooh. nightmare, which is... Ooh, that's not good. I was wanted just to say maybe it's, 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 um, it's better to just play the Knife Juggler last. <laughs> You know? Right. Whoa, now. Oh, now well, we that doing? that was questionable. Yes. And that's... He's just not going to... He just skips Hero Power. Okay. Oh, um, sure. Okay, this makes no sense. He just plays super safe. Yep. Ooh, sea Giant. Okay, there's some pressure. There's some pressure on the board. Four mana Sea Giant comes down. He's that's dead. a pressure because now the problem is your opponent can kill you with a Doom Guard into PO. Yep. And you can deal only... 11 damage. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's a Swampoos in, in Mark Kennedy's deck too. It is, yeah. So Swampoos is in both decks. Obviously one of them is going to be slightly more effective than the other, but just a 3-2 minion here isn't the end of the world. And wait, okay, again, he's trading first. So he's running the risk of hitting that egg. My god. Well, maybe he wants to actually kill the 4-4 four -four with his low tap. Yeah, uh, maybe. Because... In the long run, oh, never mind. In the long run, he is winning this if he if he trades, right? Uh, it seems because you play you play the Swampoos and you play Hero Power this turn, so you add four damage to the board. Yeah. When you trade for four. Wow, he is so scared of that knife juggler. Oh my god. Malganis top deck. Uh... Well, can we can we be aggressive here? No, there's too much no, damage no, no, on the board. No. Yeah. We need to kill that. Yep. <sighs> just looking at the opportunity to sell the two turn lethal, but there is too much damage coming back the other way. It's just a guaranteed lethal setup. Consecration is a little awkward because of that egg. Uh, Mark Kennedy is shaking his head at that consecrate draw, but he's going to have to find some way of dealing with this board now. So I think that those knives that you've been scared to throw for the last couple of turns need to come out now because even if you do pop the egg, you are at least going to damage it with the Consecrate. So. Yeah. So okay. Hero Power first. Yep. Then Swampoos, which should have been played less turn. Yeah. So it would, f it would really help with the board control right now. Yeah. I mean, if, if Mark Kennedy had just been a little bit braver with the... Um... Uh, uh, Wait, what? Uh, uh, that made no sense. No. Because now you lost damage to this phase two. Yeah. Because you need to kill the uh, the Melganis. Yeah, well, that's a good shot. Well, that, that worked. That actually worked too. Um, but yeah, so anyway, what I was going to say is Mark Kennedy's fear of the, the knife juggler popping the Norubian egg on the last couple of turns means that he missed a 1-1 one, one on one turn. And then on the, the turn following that up, he missed a 1-1 one, one plus a 3-2. And that amount of extra pressure on the board that turn would have just been lethal. He would have had enough stuff to pound through the Malganis and deal the damage he needed to face. Yes. So yeah, the fear of the, the knife juggler ru nice. ruining his life. Eh, well, there we go. He wins the game anyway. <laughs> the Coghammer to the rescue. Yup. But that, that was unnecessary risk to take. I mean, both players played the matchup not the way we are used to. Right. I mean, usually the, one of the players starts usually that zoo um starts to be hyper aggressive because he knows that he will out value sorry not out value but out tempo his opponent with taunts that are cheap and will tank a lot of damage because the only way that um zoo can go through the taunt is a silence or an implosion and otherwise you just um 
sorry, um, I mixed it up. Um, the only way Paladin can go through a taunt is by playing a weapon or double consecration. Otherwise, you need to use that huge minion after the Avenge to kill a 1-3 or a Haunted Creeper after um, after the Fend of Argus. So, this is a weird turn of events. It is indeed, but, uh, you know, we, we, we spoke at length towards the end there of uh, Mark Kennedy making a, a little bit of a mess of the last few turns, but as you said, AK Wonder definitely in the earlier turns was, was playing, we think, just a little bit less than optimally as well, so um, hard to draw too many conclusions from what happened there, but we see in the mulligan here that uh, Mark is, is running a, an Argent Protector in his Secret Paladin deck as well, so lots of uh, weird little twists in this deck. We've seen the uh, mm -hmm. Enhanso Meccano, we see the, the Argent Protector, so... It's very board-centric. Yeah, very board centric, and obviously just a, a big fan of Divine Shields, right? Like, in, in Hanso Meccano to give his board all Divine Shields, mm -hmm. Argent Protector, Divine Shield, etc. So, Cog Hammer as well. So, it's it's actually a very useful tool in a matchup like this, which is all going to be about minion trading on the board and trying to build a, an advantage. Like, a Divine Shield is one of the most powerful things you can do to pick up a, a value trade on the board. Cog Hammer is just an MVP, as you mentioned. Yeah. If, if, if Mark will get a. Um... We'll get a um, cog hammer next turn so for the turn three. That will be just insane. Yeah, for sure. It will help a lot. Corruption on the one one. <laughs> uh, it's it's dragon egg, right? It has uh, to be dragon egg. You yeah, have so much like synergy that. with those minions, and you can have another snipe to a one one right now. Yep. So coin has not been used by Mark here. So AKA Wonder will be considering his options against coin consecration. Uh, both of the two one drops he has available will uh, have a similar result. Voidwalker will leave behind a one one. Dragon Egg will leave behind a two one. Um, so yeah, he's gonna have a minion left over here if there is a consecrate top deck, but there isn't. And yeah, that is uh, not the best secret paladin draw I've ever seen oh, in my life. Definitely agree. Three secrets already by turn three. That's quite some bad luck, I would say. I mean, yep. uh, in this situation. If you want to think long term, I think playing the secrets this turn is probably the best option. All the secrets. Uh, so what does he have? Noble Sack, Redemption, and Competitive Spirit. So he gets a 2-1 a Taunt. He gets a Tournament Attendee, which then revives. Can potentially be buffed to a 3-2. I mean, <laughs> doesn't feel like it's going to have a great effect, right? With the 1-3 the on the board and the Knife Juggler that can just take care of that easily. But yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. What else was he supposed to do that turn? Just goes for the Noble Sack plus the 1-1, one, one, which is... Yeah, I mean, the the Hero Power token and the Redemption are pretty much the same thing in that situation, so I don't blame him from holding back the Redemption, trying to get it into play on a on a bigger minion, hopefully maybe uh, top deck a Pilot Shredder soon, or just get it into play, set up on a, on a lower third or something like that later on. By the way, the chat is asking, are you sucking a pen or is it a vape? Oh, I saw, oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize it was ever on camera, but okay. <laughs> Just a fun thing. Anyway, yeah. let's go back to the match because it, it looks ugly for Mark. I don't see a way out unless AK Wonder will make the same move as last time and will try to trade almost everything in whatever Mark will play on board. So let's say he coins out low tap this turn yep and he's then ak wonder is being afraid of consecration and he trades the board <laughs> huh. sure i mean i can i guess i can see that but he's gonna go for a play here redemption with two small minions in play divine shield like this is gonna get ruined by the the knife juggler implosion plan here i think um, just trade something off the board first into the Divine Shield, probably, and then uh, Implosion down the 2-2 seems reasonable. Hmm. His board is uh, reasonably well consolidated against... Uh... Okay, so I guess, yeah, he needs to check for Noble Sack and Avenge first anyway, so I guess that's a reasonable line to attack with the 2-1 the first, but I don't think he has to worry about Consecrate, because he has the Dragon Egg and the Imp Gang boss in play here anyway. Um, so you so can't play the Implosion this time, there's no way. Right. If you're afraid of consecration, 
you need to keep the implosion after the consecration. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, just, I don't think he has to be afraid of consecration because like the dragon egg and the the imp gang boss will both potentially spawn minions. Obviously, if, if his board is full, that reduces the ability for things to be spawned. But it's not like consecration is going to be a board clear for his opponent here. So I think the implosion is totally fine in this situation. Oh well, it hits for free. Yep. So pretty high percentage chance this two one goes down. There we yep, go. It, finally, finally with the last snipe. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just threatening so much damage. It, it's it's consecrate or bust, and consecrate isn't even bad for you. So I, I think I like the all in play here. This is, I mean, we were talking wait, about wait, 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 wait. Consecration what? doesn't give him anything because you right you have a two two on board, yeah, and that's it. Yep. You don't. You are not generating anything. This is why I didn't like the implosion in the first place. Yeah, but like even then, you're making him have the impl the consecration, right? And even if he does have it, sure, you're only left with a two-two. But you are left with a two-two. So you're still on things like power overwhelming top deck for lethal. You're still ahead on the board. You still get to reconsolidate. Like basically, I'd, like in that situation, I think you win the game if he consecrates, and I think you still win the game. You'd, like you, you win the you win the game if he doesn't consecrate. And I think you still win uh -huh. the game if he does. So, so okay. Yeah, five five point. So it's 2-1 for AK Wonder in this situation, and yep. uh, I guess they will stick to the same same decks, right? Yeah, I mean, this is something that we've run into a couple of times now where, um, you know, if there's no, like, breaking point between the two players' opinions of, of who's got the more favorable matchup, you kind of just end up with this position where it's the, the same matchup over and over again. But um, at the same point, I, I was thinking that... I, I, I'm sorry. Um, I was thinking that players would bring more divided decks right. to be prepared against aggro, board-centric decks, yeah. and against control decks. So this way you use a fair... You, you have a fair chance of getting an advantage when you when you are facing an aggro deck, right? So an example, if you play a Secret Paladin, then you would like to have uh, more... Cards like Hawkhammer, Consecration. If you play double Secret Pilot, as an example, right? Yeah. If you, so, I don't know. I, I was thinking like maybe that should be something that should put you in a position when you're at an advantage. Then when you have an advantage over your opponent, and the only case, the only different cases is with Druid because it's so one-dimensional class, right. right? So when you're facing a class that is very aggro. Uh, is aggrocentric, then you are not changing anything in your deck anyway, because it's all about wild growth, innervates, and keeper of the growth. So yep, makes and, sense. And and swipes, and that's like eight out of thirty that you always have in the deck. Yeah, there's a few things you can do to druid to make it more resilient against aggro, like mind control tech, etc. We even saw like Earthen Ring Farseer in the Curse Trials was surprisingly good in a ton of situations. Um, Completely forgotten card that used to be part of the meta, but isn't anymore. But yeah, as you said, players have uh, tended to just go for uh, consolidated strong decks here. And the Abusive Sergeant on the Haunted Creeper to take out the Secret Keeper and picking up that Void uh, void Walker, sorry, I was about to say Void Cooler. Picking mm -hmm. up the Void Walker to, to uh, fill out the curve is really powerful. He just needs to find one more thing to do on the following turn. And then he has that extremely powerful Void Cooler into Doom Guard follow up. Yeah. And uh, we didn't see Marky to have an uh, an owl, right, in his deck. Uh, no, we saw the owl come out from AK Wonder, but yeah, not from Mark. Ooh. Oh well, in terms of picking up things to do on turn three, that's that's one it. amazing draw. Yep. That's one yeah. amazing draw. I'm kind of surprised that he's not playing around consecration this time. Uh, yeah. I mean, again. Consecrate leads leaves him with a 1-1 a one -one behind on the board and also like they played three entire games now and he hasn't seen a Consecration come out once. So he may just have the read that there is no Consecration in this deck which is uh, something that's pretty common for, for Secret Paladin decks these days to cut that card completely just expecting to be ahead on the board more often than they are behind. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, AK Wonder probably has the mentality at this point of you know we've, we've played three games, we're in the fourth now I haven't seen a single consecration being used, so I'm just gonna stop playing around it until he shows me he has it. Wait, he did do see one consecration. Did he? Yeah, I'm sure he saw one. The turn when there was an Malganis. Oh, you're right. Yeah, okay, I'm done. Never mind. The consecration that didn't do damage to the face. Yep, 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 yep. 
Totally right. Okay. So he's seen one consecration in three games. So, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the point still stands. He probably thinks it's a one of in the deck. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. There is a consecration, at least one in this deck somewhere. And he chose to make a, a power overwhelming tempo play there as opposed to just dropping the Void Cooler on curve, which uh, allowed him to also get the, the Swampoos out to destroy the Cockhammer. So big swing on the board, much bigger than the, uh, the Void Cooler would have been individually. And honestly, I, so. I, mean, I was thinking about the Void Cooler anyway. I mean, in, ter in, in terms of like immediate initiative onto the board, it's a bigger effect, right? Like clearing the board of the Shredder and destroying the weapon, like long-term investment, obviously the Void Cooler is better because it has a Doom Guard inside it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like that one turn, the presence on the board, uh, that was a, a bigger play, I think, with the Power Overwhelming and the, the Acidic Swamp Boots. Well, in this situation, there's only one play, I think, which is Zombie Chow, Blessing of Kings. And you pray your opponent doesn't have a second PO. Because that puts a 6-7 minion on board mm -hmm. that is not being traded by the board. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, I like it. And from there, you can try and maybe get some value out of Enhanced Omicano on the following turn. Because if, if AK Wonder doesn't pick up a good way to trade into this, he will most likely just be ignoring it and going face. At which point you can potentially get Enhanced Omicano onto your Zombie Chow, maybe get Divine Shield and start picking up some value that way. Even Wind Fury can get some work done, but oh, power overwhelming number two. Not overly relevant because he actually turned down the option for the Blessing of Kings, but it's yep. starting to rack up the damage here and he does now have the potential to answer any board that the, the Paladin can potentially throw at him with that second huge power overwhelming buff in his hand. So I guess flame him. Yeah. Again, I wanted to click the hide button to see the the, 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 the board yeah, the board yeah, state, yeah. Um, but it doesn't work. So, Lola Squire is not better. Also, Light Warden gets buffed by Drusilla Champion. So that's something. That's very true. I mean, is that? Oh, of course, the zombie. Oh chair. yeah, right. Oh, yeah, it's. it's... Oh, AK Wonder, you are my new favorite player. Like, I, I would have never caught that in a billion years. That is a that is a downside free flaming. It's strictly better than flaming in that situation, and I would have. Wow, it you used the word strictly stuff. in a correct context. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess even in this scenario, it's still not strictly better, right? Because you can't silence see. a flaming. So. But it has potential to be better than free two. Yep. Yeah, very, very true. But yeah, I mean, that is, that's a great catch by AK Wonder. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd like to give us the credit that if we were allowed to press the hide button and look at the board, we would have picked up on that as well. But well played to AK Wonder for picking that up. <laughs> and now it looks like... Um... Oh, it's heartbreaking, to be honest. You have to play the Encanto Mechanical this turn. Or, yeah, well... Otherwise, you play Hero Power, Divine Favor, draw one card. Yeah, I mean, we felt like he had to play the Blessing of Kings on the previous turn. I definitely agree with you. I think, like, Kings or Enhancer Meccano or something has to come down. But, uh, like, Mark seems to have this mentality that, you know, he's not going to win the game unless he gets good value out of these cards. But, unfortunately, the opposite is true. Like, he's not going to be able to win this game unless he gets something going on the board right now. Like, he's never going to be in a position where those cards are any better than they are now. So... He needs to try and get some sort of potential out of them. And it's just not going to happen. And I believe the, the Zoo March will continue on here. And how much damage is that? Five, eight, ten. What was the card to the left? Twelve, sixteen. Wait, why wouldn't you play Dr. Boom? Uh, he wanted to get the Flame Imp out of his hand so he could... Guarantee play Doom Guard for free and without discarding Doctor Boom. I don't know, but it's yeah. I it's... know. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now Mark is staring at board lethal, which he can't really do anything about it because he doesn't have a consecration again. No equality. So probably doesn't play equality, but uh, the consecration is missing again. It is indeed. Um, I guess although actually, could he have got full value out of Boom on the previous turn? He would have only had two spots on the board, right? So he would have missed a Boom bot. I don't know, well, like, you oh. don't have to kill your Void Walker, Void Caller. Uh, 
All right, so you could have traded with two other minions, right? You can trade the two yeah. one ones and play Doctor Boom. Yeah. And it's still better against board clears, and you have Doom Guard with Pio next turn, so you have bigger burst. Yeah. So if there's a consecration this turn, you you ha you have guaranteed lethal anyway. Yeah. Because this way, if there will be a consecration, you're one of lethal. At least from from the state of your hand. Yep. Uh, anyway, Mark is going to stare at this combination of four cards in his hand, and then he's going to very quickly get the sad news that there is no combination that stops him from dying on the following turn. Uh, even if this 1-1 gets taunt, that is not going to help him out at all. It's going to get Wind Fury just to troll. No, he does get the taunt. Okay. Um, and that is going to be 3-1 to one from Mr. AKA Wonder. And that's it. Yeah, Mark Kennedy is conceding. AK Wonder wins 3 to 1, and um, he's the second Warlock to advance, or is it the first one? Uh, he is the second Warlock alongside Ecop to advance. Yes, right. But yeah. I guess with different type of deck, right? Because Ecop was playing Reno Jackson. Did he use even the second deck? Yeah, he had Zoo as his second deck. Oh, yeah, right. He had yeah. Zoo. Anyway, so. Um, Congratulations to AK Wonder for advancing to the top eight. And unfortunately, that's the end of the road for Mark uh, because it's a single elimination tournament, you know. And uh, we'll have the next match in a few minutes, which will be, let me check the schedule. Um, that will be the match between Super JJ and Hoey. Nice. So I would predict this will be a match between Rogue and Paladin. Rogue and Paladin? I'm going to go for Rogue and Druid. Okay, well, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we'll be going to a short break for a few minutes to prepare the new uh, players and stay with us. This is G2 Esports Invitational Class Legends. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 